I am Optimus Prime, leader of the Autobots. The greatest sci-fi show on Earth is about to begin. In your neighborhood, who you gonna call? I think I just got a bit too excited. Ray, how was it last night? It's good. It's, it was, was it the, have I read it right that that was the first time that you've done it in a long, long time, that song? In a long time? You mean like 24 hours or eight hours? <laughs> no, last night, last night when you did it, it was, it's, you've not performed it live on stage for a long I time. I perform this song all the time, no matter where I go, I will get hit with a tomato if I try to leave the stage without doing that song. I think I've read something really wrong somewhere then. But it was awesome. And what a way to start off for the love of sci-fi. Like, you know, you've got you on stage doing that. There were Ghostbusters behind you. Yeah. It was amazing. And it is such an amazing song. And what I think is fabulous is how you actually came about writing it and what they wanted. If you want to just tell the story of how you got well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I had a lot of other hit records for those of you who are younger, who may not remember. And uh, so the film company liked my other songs. And so they, you know, hired me to write this song. And I remember they had tried to find people for like a year or so, really famous people. And no one could come up with a song with the words Ghostbusters in it. The director particularly wanted the words Ghostbusters actually in the song. And it's unfair right now because you guys have all heard my version of the song. But it's, if you try to sing it, I'm gonna be a ghostbuster. It just does not sing well at all. It's a really terrible word to try and put into a song. So at late at night, I remembered the part of the Ghostbusters where they had the backpacks on and the phone number was underneath it. And it looked to me like the Roto-Rooter commercials or the drainage plumbing commercials where you see the plumbers and they had the phone number under that so I came up with the concept of instead of saying Ghostbusters I just say who you gonna call and actually in the record I never say Ghostbusters I let the girls say Ghostbusters so that's what made it work so to speak it is one of the greatest movie songs of all time isn't it but what is fascinating is the career that you have your life has been amazing. The things that you've done, the from when you start, because you started at a very young age, didn't you? Like with music. Yeah, re really young age. I started playing a clarinet at six, guitar at about ten or eleven, and I started going on tour with a band called the Spinners and Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder, and I toured with the Rolling Stones when I was eighteen. Touring with the Rolling Stones at eighteen—that's rock and roll. Yeah. That really, really is. I had a good time. We had to write a book about all the stuff that happened as and a teenager. <laughs> weren't you given a birthday cake on? Yeah, I was a teenager. For, for, on the um, stage by the Rolling Stones. Hmm? No, that was Stevie Wonder gave me the cake, yeah, for my birthday party, yeah. Just the stories that he tells about, like, Muhammad Ali and Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye, it's like, you have had the coolest yeah. life. I've been having a good time, a lot of fun, very blessed. If, I mean, looking back, you, I mean, Marvin Gaye is one of the people who was influencing you, who he mentored you, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. What, an inc how did you get that opportunity? I play, I'm, by the way, for those who don't know, I'm a guitar player, so what I really do is play the guitar and everything else is a spin-off of me playing the guitar. And another person that's really popular in the UK was Barry White. If you listen to any Barry White records, that's me playing the guitar on just about everything. And then there's one song he did called, You See the Trouble With Me? I wrote that song. So that's actually my song. I wrote it with Barry White, yeah. What's your favorite? Like you play guitar, you, you My favorite is to play the guitar. Well, that's what I do. Everything is, the guitar is the nucleus of everything for me. Yeah, so everything stems off of that. How many have you got? Oh, gosh. You know, I got married about 20-something years ago. So then I started collecting guitars because I couldn't have it collect girls anymore. So 
<laughs> I started buying guitars, and my wife said, why are you buying so many guitars? I said, you know, I really don't know, but I, I know that I'm not collecting women anymore, so I got to switch to guitars. She says, okay, that's all right. <laughs> so maybe I got about 150 guitars, I think. Yeah. Wow, I've got two, and I thought I was cool. It used to be 150 girls. I mean, that's 150 <laughs> guitars. And it's cheaper than guitars, too. <laughs> Less annoying. I mean, I ain't got to hear 150, you know. I never had 150. Girls. Don't nobody write that later. <laughs> That's called a joke. <laughs> you have had an amazing career. I mean, what would you say has been the highlight where you go, oh, my gosh. I well, believe it or not, I, I would say the highlight is Ghostbusters. I mean, it really is a, oh, my gosh, it's like um, hitting the baseball and it just went out the park and never stopped going. We never found a ball. It just keeps going. And uh, it, it is my favorite song. And I think it's my favorite because every time I look into the face of a five or seven year old child, they know the song and they're happy and they're smiling. And every, every time, no matter where I go, somebody says, who are you going to call? Or I ain't afraid of no ghost. Or Buster makes me feel good. They always have a smile on their face. So it is the absolute happiest song I've ever been involved with in my life. And like you're saying, it's across generations, isn't it? As well, because it's cross there's... generations. It's like every year I got a new song, and it's just uh, it's a happy song. It's just the happiest song I've ever had. I've tried to get my little girl to say Ghostbusters back when I say, "Who are you going to call?" And at the minute, we've got ah, or yeah. we've got uh, more. Yeah, that's it. So, but I yeah. will get her to say Ghostbusters one yeah. day. There, absolutely. Definitely. Does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask Ray? Were you in a band before you did the Ghostbusters song? Was I in a band? Were you in another band? Yes, I had a band called Radio, R-A-Y-D-I-O. And I also had a lot of records on Ray Parker Jr. And we had, before Ghostbusters, on myself, I had eight gold and platinum albums in a row. So if, you, if you're bored one day, go on Google and look, up, look me up, and you'll listen to all these songs and go, oh, I didn't know he sang that song years ago. I mean, it's a lot of songs, you know. Really long career, haven't you? You started like. Yeah, I'm old age. now. No, I don't mean it like that. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than I look. How's that? <laughs> Hi, Ray. Um, I was just wondering um, obviously, who you're going to call Ghostbusters, massive part of our lives. Um, is it true that you've got your own unique version of that on your answer phone? Now, what the heck did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> you guys had this funny accent, you know? <laughs> Have you got a unique version of that on a say what now? Oh, you have a unique. Are you, are you from like the Northeast? Yeah. I love oh, your accent, but I can never understand it. <laughs> okay. He said that you have a unique way he's heard of answering the phone at home. And could you? Oh, tell you like us? my ringtone on my phone? Yes. When you call my phone, by the way, and it's the only one in the world that does this, my phone goes, who is this? Dun, dun, calling on my phone. Dun, dun, dun. Who are you trying to call? <laughs> Leave your name and number after the tone. Now, who are you trying to call? Please speak clearly. You know, <laughs> so it's pretty, pretty unique, yeah. A lot of people call my phone and they hope that I don't answer. So they could just hear the song play. Exactly. Did they have to say, just let me call once? Oh, yeah, they hang up, they call back. I didn't want you to answer. Don't answer. You know, they <laughs> hang up and they call back so they can hear the tone. And pretty fun. Hi. Um, can, we, can we try it? Can we what? Oh, are you trying to get Ray Parker Jr.'s mobile number? <laughs> Now, if I give everybody my phone number, I'll have 150 girls again. We, you know what happened the last time. <laughs> Although it would be cool to hear it. Um, any more questions for Ray? There's one at the front, Damien. Can we get a cheer for Damien? Damien's been awesome today. <laughs> Hi, Ray. Is there anyone that you'd like to play guitar with uh, that you haven't played with yet? Yes, Paul McCartney. I played with George Harrison, I played with Ringo Starr. I was too late to play with John Lennon because he passed. 
And I played with just about everybody, but I have not played with Paul McCartney, who's one of my heroes, you know. But everybody else who's pretty much my heroes, I played with just about everybody. I know he's from this area, but he, I think he's probably the best songwriter of our time. I know there's a lot of people that would yeah, agree with yeah. you on that one. Damien's racing to the back. There must be a question over there. Have you been contacted for Ghostbusters 3 soundtrack? Ghostbusters 3 soundtrack. First of all, they don't contract me for anything. I did the first one, they did the second one without me, and they did the third one without me. And I don't know why they don't want to play the song, because the people in the audience, they like to scream Ghostbusters when they're at this movie theater. And so they keep writing reports of how bad it is because they don't put the song in there. And they still haven't done it. So they're working on Ghostbusters 4. No one's contacted me, of course. <laughs> and hopefully they will use the song in its original form again, because there's an article in uh, Los Angeles that said, well, you know, they've had Run DMC do it, Pentatonix, Mark Ronson, Run Republic. I mean, they've had all these people do it, and the public still wants to hear the original version in the, in the movie, because that's what got people excited. So, yeah, I think it's, you know. <laughs> I'm not a movie film mogul, so I mean, I don't direct films or anything, but it seems really simple. Why don't you just put the original song back in the film? You know, that's what everybody tells me. Why don't they put this, you know, and they blame it on me. Why don't you just put the original? I said, I got nothing to do with that. You know, I don't own Sony Pictures, so. Let's hope that they just put the original song back in the film would be nice. You'd think that they would. The whole world loves that song, and nobody should be allowed to cover certain songs, and that is one of them. I think so. There's only you that can sing it. Hmm? Yeah, there's only you that can sing it. I, yeah. I think I, I like the way I sing it. It's very good. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions, ladies and gents? Um, if you didn't do music, what, did you, what do you think you'd be doing? Well, first of all, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and I was going to college and going to school to design car parts because they build cars in Detroit. At least they used to. <laughs> and um, I told my father when I was offered to go on tour with Stevie Wonder and the Rolling Stones, I was actually in school. And my dad wanted me to stay in school and design car parts. And I told my dad that, that that was his dream, not my dream. I just want to drive the cars. I don't want to build them. You know, so I think I would be building cars and living in Detroit. And then you wouldn't even know me. <laughs> Any more questions? Don't be shy. Don't be shy, y'all. There he is. There he is. Do you still speak to the guys from the original Ghostbusters? You can, are you in contact with them? Actually, yes. Um, Ernie Hudson I spoke to. They're doing a documentary on me, by the way, that, that Sony's helping with. So Ivan Reitman is in it. Uh, Ernie Hudson is in it. I think Dan Aykroyd's doing it next week. And the only one we got to find is Bill Murray, who's playing baseball in South Carolina somewhere. You know, He likes to be at the baseball field. So, But every now and then I, sp I speak to the guys, yeah. Not as often as you guys think. We don't like all oh, hang out, you know. <laughs> uh, if you ever get in trouble, who are you going to call? <laughs> sorry, sorry. So if I get in trouble? <laughs> I don't get in trouble. <laughs> I ain't never done nothing wrong. Um, you know, TMZ has nothing on me. <laughs> I'm never on TV doing anything wrong. And so um, I'm just an angel floating around here. You believe that, right? <laughs> I'm looking at her. She's like, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Hello. One of my, my all-time favorite films is Enemy Territory. Do you have any stories you can tell from that film? Stories I could tell from the film. Yeah, anyway. The film was completely done when they hired me, so I would say no. And uh, I shot the video. I, the only stories I got are from the video. And I didn't even meet the cast to the video until the end, 
when we did the scene in New York City. And I thought it was interesting, New York City, the busiest time of the day, Friday, one in the afternoon, they shut down Times Square, which is the heart of New York City. And then there was Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie, and, and uh, the other guy. And we were all dancing in the middle of Times Square. And then Bill Murray just laid on the ground and said, spin me around, I'm gonna break dance. You know? So it was very, we didn't know what the heck we were doing. We didn't have a lot of time to do it. But they did do it Friday at one in the afternoon, which I thought was pretty crazy. Harold Ramis, that's the other guy I'm thinking of. It did look very cool, though. Uh, any more questions? For Damien is walking around with the microphone. Don't be afraid. Put it to your mouth and ask a question. Damien, there's one over here. Can you see? I like that outfit you got on there. What's the favorite, what's your favorite song you've ever written? Ghostbusters. <laughs> Who you gonna call? It makes me happy. <laughs> Sends my kids to college too. <laughs> you can't complain about that bit, did that? By the way, I never really got in any trouble or anything, but I do have four sons, you know. They get into trouble. All four of them. They're in music as well, aren't they? Hmm? Your sons have kind of followed two of yeah, them. Yeah, the followed. two youngest yeah. ones are playing music. I have four sons. One's 32, one's 30, one's 20, one's 18, and they're all way taller than me. And they play sports. Yeah. Who's your favorite Ghostbuster? The one that's not in a movie, which would be me. <laughs> <laughs> First, I'm trying to get the song back in the movie. Then I want to get me back in the movie, so I got to work fast. Maybe I could do both at the same time, you know. <laughs> We've got time for one last question, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if you have a burning desire to ask a question. Oh, Damien, there's somebody waving their hand over there. There's somebody waving their hand on the other side. I think he's walking down this way. Hello. Uh, where is she going? <laughs> I have no idea, but she was on a mission. Okay. Hey, Ray. Um, if you could write and perform a song for any other film or any other franchise, what would your choice be? For any other franchise? Oh, shoot, I'd like some Batman or some comic book characters or something. You know. um, I would say Star Wars or Indiana Jones, but Steven, I mean, uh, John Williams is pretty good. Might want to leave that alone, you know. <laughs> But some of the other stuff, you know, sometimes I hear the stuff on TV and I'm like, wow, I like the thematic thing, but you guys need a, like a, something you can yell out and, and scream with. Or let me put it this way. The combination that worked on Ghostbusters was Elmer Bernstein, who's like a John Williams, did the score. And then I came with, made the more commercial song that people remember they could sing along with. So I would like to add that to like a Star Wars or Indiana Jones or something like that. Just have a three and a half minute song that people could sing along with. You know, Star Wars, I love the theme and everything, it's wonderful it is, but no one sings along with it, you know. So I like to make something that would, you know, you could dance and sing along to. Well, you say that nobody sings along to it, so I'm really glad you didn't hear yeah. me singing along yeah. to the music before. Well, you know, when I do music, the first thing I do is I don't want anything to be too serious. Let's have fun. So I like to make it simple, I like to make it have fun, and I like to if you play a guitar or you play an instrument, that you could play my song very easily. I don't like to make it too difficult to play. Ladies and gentlemen, it is, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it, it's the best movie song, isn't it, soundtrack? It's amazing and She's I can't so wait <laughs> for my little girl and this one, whatever the heck it's gonna be, I hope they're geeks, I hope we sit down for a family meal and I want them to scream at the top of their lungs, Ghostbusters. Now like and that. I can say I met him.